welcome back so today's video is making up a, a holder for my dial gauge here so the story is I redid the mill a little while ago stripped it all down completely replaced the bearings in the spindle um, and put it all back together now when it was pulled apart and the column was taken off the base there were some uh, shims that had come out and those shims were in there to line up the column with the table so that you have the column perpendicular to the table so that you're cutting uh, flat if that makes sense so I'll put it all back together I didn't know where those shims had fallen out from you know what part of the area where the column bolts onto the base so I didn't know what shims to put back where so I need to tram the mill so that it's flat again this video is not on tramming but it's on the tool that I need to make up to hold the dial gauge in the spindle so that I can use it to tram the head of the mill which on a round column mill it's kind of not that easy there's no adjustment you just have to shim it with the shims where the column is bolted to the base so the plan is uh, if we have our quill and our spindle here is our ER32 chuck um, I want to make up a oh if we have the uh, say the table down here so basically we want to have the spindle perpendicular to the uh, table and I know for a fact that the way it is now and I mean this is exaggerating but it is tipped to the side like that a bit so my milling cutter is more or less sort of milling like as I said it's exaggerated but it's milling more on this edge uh, than it is on this edge so the plan for this build is to um, make up a, a bar that will fit into the into the chuck maybe 10 mil 10 millimeter 3 8 of an inch um, have a, a, a block on there of some sort that's uh, so I can slide it up and down so there will be some sort of knob that I can turn to tighten it up and loosen it so that gives me my up and down movement and then that will be connected to another bar that comes along this way and there will be a block on here as well and the dial gauge will be connected to that block and that's what I'll be able to use to bring down and touch off on the table and so we do it on you know the right hand side of the table and then we turn the chuck around and we do it on the left hand side of the table and that tells us you know the difference will tell us how much of an angle we are on our uh, spindle here in relation to the table and then from there I can shim up the column to try and get that straight so this is doing the uh, x-axis and I will use the same tool to do the y-axis I don't have much travel on the y-axis so that's the idea of bringing this block in closer here maybe uh, so that the dial gauge is uh, closer in and it does not fall off the end of the table when you're doing the, the front and the back and the y-axis so as I said I was thinking of um, 10 mil 38 bar uh, for these two bits and I just have to see what I've got for the other bits but basically I want to put the uh, dial indicator goes into um, a hole in the square block and then maybe some sort of hand screw or even a cap head allen bolt uh, that I can tighten up with a allen wrench or allen key so I'll go off and have a look at what sort of stock I've got and then we'll come back and we'll sort of lay out what it needs to look like and take some measurements I found some uh, 10 millimeter stock uh, that would work for this project so that piece there would be um, you know probably cut a lot shorter than that that could go into the spindle um, this piece could be the 
horizontal piece and then I've got some 16 millimeter square stock here uh, that I can use for the blocks in here. So this video is uh, a little bit different. Uh, apart from this introduction that you just heard, I just made this dial gauge without, you know, narrating throughout the uh, build. So I was just going to uh, do the build and I will just narrate it now. And there is a little bit at the end where I do live narration um, and talk about um, some of the issues with the part as well. The first thing I need to do here is take some measurements uh, so we know how large to make this part. I've got some round stock and some square stock that I'm going to use for the hinges. So um, this was, I'm just marking this out where to cut it off. And this was actually a bit of a mistake, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, later on. So I'm just turning up the end here on the round stock. And I'm um, turning down the diameter to make it round. This is cold rolled steel, so it's not completely round. I go down to about nine and a half millimeters. And you'll see, um, because it's so long, there's a bit of flex in the middle. And that caused a little bit of um, a high spot there. So I needed to come back yeah, a little bit later after I've turned it down to try and um, take that high spot out. And there were, you know, a number of iterations of this. Uh, you only just see a couple on the screen. Um, but, you know, I go through again, just work out, and I just narrow it down each time until I've um, got it pretty much parallel. And a final measure and then we move the tail stock out the way and I just uh, bring the part in and we check it on to the bar there. Okay so the bars were held in the lathe and the chuck there so I just need to chop those ends off. And that wheel was getting a bit short so I tried a different grinder which had a short wheel as well and it was hard to get in there but I Finally got the piece in. And just cleaning up the ends here on the belt grinder. Now I'm working out, um, you know, where the holes are going to go and how these bits of pieces are going to be um, put together and bolted together and uh, how they're going to clamp. And as I said, it was a bit of a mistake having these um, short bits, so... I put it in the vise here and I put the other piece at the other end just to keep it all square but I had a lot of stick out here and it's because they're so short. I didn't want to go into the parallel so once I start trying to drill the center hole um, it actually pushes down uh, the part. I don't think you can see it in the video because for some reason the video went all shaky um, but it does push the part down so I had to abort that idea. And then I went back to the drawing board and ended up using the rest of that bar stock and just making the parts uh, one on each end of this bar stock. That hole you see at the other end is um, a test hole that I actually cut off before I make the, the second part. So found the centre and we're drilling a um, centre hole there for the drill and then We've got our uh, pilot hole, so I think that's around about a 5mm drill bit. And then we come in with a 9.5mm drill bit. I don't have a, um, a ream for this. It's not that much of a precision part, so you know once it's all clamped up it's not going to move, it'll be fine. So I've turned this 90 degrees and now I'm drilling the hole for the uh, M6 thread that will be used to clamp uh, this part onto the bar. Uh, so I think that was a 5mm drill bit as well. And I've uh, tapped all the way through and we'll drill that out a bit later. So cutting the piece off, so that's one piece done. Sorry that was the, that's, that was the test hole that I cut off. 
so the good piece is actually on the other end there that you can see now. Um, so this is kind of a little bit repetitive I guess, it's the same part with the same dimensions, a pilot hole and then the 9.5mm hole, we flip it around 90 degrees and put in our uh, 5mm hole for our M6 um, thread that we thread into this part. And then I cut both of those ends off and that's sort of how they fit together. Now remember there's no slit in these parts so they're not tight on these bars. So that's the next job. No it's not. The next job is to measure up. Oh that's right. My doll gauges have different diameters so that throws my plan out the door. Um, I didn't check that before. So I decided to make uh, the other part at the other end for the imperial dial gauge. So I'm just taking some measurements here. This third part um, goes on the horizontal bar and that's pretty much exactly the same. And I've actually used the, uh, the bit that I cut off in the beginning. Um, but what I do here is I've put it more in, into the vise but for the second one I use the DRO and I stopped a couple of millimeters short of the bottom and then I push those parallels in or take them out and then I can go right through without um, hitting the parallels. So that, that worked okay. Uh, and this one here is a five millimeter hole. I'm not sure if I removed the parallels or not. No, so that went through fine. And then we can tap that out to M6. And a little bit of a deburr. Um, the other bits were deburred as well after um, drilling them. So that's the third bit. And the fourth bit is the bit for the dial gauge. Now this bit is a little bit longer. Um, and But it's built the same way. So, you know, you have a... Um, a nine and a half millimetre, no sorry it's not nine and a half millimetres, so it's the size of the dial gauge. Um, so I sort of skipped all past that instead of watching that again. So now I've marked out where I need to do it, I had to turn the vise round to um, set this up so that I could cut these slits in the ends where they're going to be clamping onto the bar. Um, and that works fine. Now these threaded holes go all the way through so I need to drill out half of that hole. Um, this one I think I already did. And then once that was done I went to the belt grinder and we're just uh, putting a radius on all of the ends here so it looks um, a little bit more respectable. And we're doing a assembly. And everything seems to work quite good. I talk about, it looks a little bit fidgety and it is. I get a bit of angles there, I can um, change the angles so that's all good. So um, it all fits together good. I pull it apart because I want to hot glue these four pieces, the four small hinge pieces. Um, so I bring that over to the vise, there's my bucket of oil there. And I get out my uh, forge burner, foundry burner. And I'm just heating this up till it goes blue, black, and then it sort of goes, a, if you go a bit further, it goes back to a silvery colour. Um, and then I'll just do that on these uh, four pieces here. And to be honest, uh, they're small pieces, they don't take long to um, get warmed up for, for hot gluing. Uh, once they're cooled down, I fish them out of the oil and clean them all off and now we're doing another sort of final assembly here. Now I'm pointing at a little shim I had to put in there and I explain about that in the last bit. So it was just the dial gauge was getting clamped too tight um, but I do explain that in the next bit which is coming up soon. 
but everything works fine there it moves all different ways and you can set it to where you want it now next part is to take the vise off and mount it up in the chuck um, now I won't be actually doing uh, the tramming in this video so that will be in another video to come and I'll put a link in the description when um, I actually get that video together. I've actually done the tramming already um, but I haven't put the video together yet so one video at a time and I basically send to the uh, table and then work out where we are I'll clamp it all up and then I can sort of lift up the dial gauge um, plunger and move to the other side and take a reading of where we are. I've used the uh, dial gauge holder to trim the mill and it worked uh, pretty well. So I'll leave a link to the video of trimming the round column mill. There's no adjustments on that so it has to be all shimmed up so there's a bit of an art to it but I'll leave a link for that. Now I've pulled this apart just to show some uh, design flaws to be honest. If you're going to make one of these, well if I was going to make this again I would change a few things. Uh, basically how it works is, you know, the bolt goes through there and locks these together. As you tighten that down, the clamps clamp onto the bar and also clamp onto this bar. It's a little bit fidgety because you've got this in the, in the quill. Um, this wants to slide up and down. This one wants to slide, you know, across the horizontal. Um, if I was doing this again, I would probably have this round the other way. And I'd have a piece of, you know, this would be longer at this end with a hole in it which just goes into here. So I'd have a separate uh, clamping bolt or handle for the vertical and um, also a, a separate bolt or clamp for that one there. I had the same issue at the other end as well. So that goes on top there, just the same setup as what we have over here. Um, and then the dial gauge uh, fits in there. Now there's a couple of things wrong with this is um, I had the same issue where you know this wants to move and the dial gauge wants to fall out when I'm trying to clamp it up. Um, also this is a longer part so when I'm clamping this down I'm getting more pressure clamping the dial gauge than I'm getting tightening this part onto the bar. So the dial gauge is nice and snug in there however this is still a little bit loose on the bar so I have to tighten it down a bit more and I don't really want to you know put too much pressure on the dial gauge and, and damage it. So again I'd do a similar type thing I would um, you know maybe have it an extra bit longer here um, not slotted and it just bolts together so when you bolt that one that fixes the bar and then the dial gauge would be clamped separately with this one over here and also as a result of this being longer and clamping too tight onto the um, dial gauge I had to put a like a little shim in here so that you know it was going to firm up on the dial gauge but it wouldn't over uh, tighten it so that was the way I got around it now I don't know if I'm going to modify these and change them I mean this tool is only going to be probably used for trimming the mill and you know how often do you do that well I've done it once so maybe I can just put up um, you know with it next time uh, but as I said if I was going to build another one I would uh, just change a couple of things and I thought I'd mention that after I've used the tool so that um, if you're thinking of doing the same and building a a dial gauge indicator like this then perhaps you want to think about those things and and add that into your design thanks for watching